in the need of prayer. Hallelujah, Lord, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, hallelujah, Lord, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, hallelujah, Lord. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, hallelujah, Lord, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It is, wonder, it is wonderful to see you all on this bright and sunny Sunday morning. Um, as we gather this morning, I want to take a few moments for announcements. Uh, Bill Wilderman has an announcement. There. Go ahead. This wasn't me. <laughs> uh, I just want to call attention to the fact that this Tuesday evening at 7 p.m., there will be an administrative council meeting, and the subject is the daycare center. Uh, I just want to give you a brief uh, synopsis of what's going on. There are two young ladies who are in the process of purchasing the uh, daycare, daycare business, not the building. We own the building. And the ad board meeting Tuesday night is meeting with those two ladies. And we have a list of questions and concerns that we want to talk to them about and ask. The meeting is open to anyone in the church who wants to come. However, the votes are only by members only of the ad board. So you're invited to come to the meeting if you want to. We have an open, open meeting, and that is it. Thank you, Bill, and that's Tuesday night at 7, 7 o'clock, yeah. yeah. Does anyone else have an announcement to make this morning? I wanted to just give a little information. I've had a few people ask about when can I find you in the office, and. I'm planning in September to post specific office hours as once we have the Bible study time <coughs> determined uh, along with the fall schedule. Uh, but I'm here most, most days, Tuesday through Sunday. And um, a lot of times you can find me, especially later mornings and afternoons. Uh, but by all means, call and make an appointment. I'm happy to do that if you would like a specific time. Um, so just. Uh, be in touch with me or be in touch with Michelle in the office and we will make arrangements. As we have gathered here, we gather to honor God with our lives. As we gather here, we gather to listen for God's voice speaking to us today. As we gather here, we offer ourselves in gratitude. Let us worship together. Before we begin, I want to let you know we're not using the screen today, so you'll have to use your hymn books. We'll do it the old-fashioned way. Please rise for the call of worship. Everyone come. Come and refresh without money and without price. Our hunger is not slack. We thirst for harmony and hunger for integrity. Listen together, for we have words of life. Your yearning shall be filled, our longing shall be touched. For there is a promise, my love for you shall be as for David. Listening, you shall have good food and abundance. Gracious God, 
who has satisfied the hungry and quenched the thirst of longing people. Grant us now the gift of attentiveness, that our eyes may see the flavor of your love. Grant us quickness of imagination, that we may see the signals of your promise. Grant us warmth of heart, that companionship may bind all within this house in peace and love, so that we may enjoy your wonder and grace. For the sake of Christ we pray, and for the sake of all humankind, amen. Let us sing, In Christ There Is No East or West. It's found in the Red Hymnals, page 548. In Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. In Christ shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find, their service is the goal. is neither Jew nor Greek and neither slave nor frame both male and female both are made and all akin to me in Christ now me both east and west in the night south and north all Christly souls are one in him throughout the whole wide earth. I invite you to be seated. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Holy God, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to gather in this place to worship. And so we pray that the words of our mouths, the prayers of our hearts, the music of our tongues, the very essence of our being will be oriented to you today, that we may hear with joy what you have to say to us and may dare to live what it is you call us to be. All this we ask in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Hebrew. He was the Hebrew scripture from Joshua 5, verses 13 through 15. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or for our enemies? He says, neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so.
Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Since I met this blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made I would invite our children to come forward and our youth. I think for uh, Thomas and Mason, it'd be a long trip. It would be a long, yeah, that's true. They're camping up so in Tim. I will, just so you don't all feel deprived, I will incorporate it into my sermon today. How about that? So, um, why don't we come back to our scripture, our next, our next lesson. I think some of the children went downstairs to uh, Sunday school. Our second reading this morning is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 2. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. The gospel lesson is from Matthew 22. Please rise for the gospel lesson. Verses 15 through 22. This is about paying taxes to Caesar. (laughs) We all know about taxes, right? (laughs) Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denialist, and he asked them, whose portrait is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, so they left him and went away. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Let us now sing hymn number 256, We Would See Jesus. 256 in the red hymn, no. Yeah. Hey. 
This morning continues the series on life's lessons and at least uh, lessons, occasions, events in my life that have been formative in instructing me about the faith that I have come to practice and some of the core principles among those that I believe. Uh, today, uh, and I, I see that somehow we missed the title in the bulletin, but today the, the title is Finding Balance When Life Teeters and Totters finding balance when life teeters and totters. But first, would you please pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As many of you know, every, uh, well, it's usually late spring, beginning of summer, depending on how you look at the month of June, uh, the United Methodists from all over New England gather for what we call annual conference. And we celebrate ministries amongst our churches and make decisions that, uh, that affect uh, all of the churches here in New England in a variety of ways. Uh, some of my favorite parts, though, are the, the fellowship, getting to know other Christians, other United Methodists, from Vermont and Maine and New Hampshire and Massachusetts and Connecticut and Rhode Island and sometimes special guests from, from other places across the country, indeed, around the world. And I, uh, I look forward to lunch time, uh, not just because of the food, although it's often really good, but, but especially to have some conversations that there aren't always time for. Uh, and to catch up with old friends that maybe I haven't seen for a year or two or sometimes longer or haven't had a chance to talk with. This was several years ago now when annual conference session was still at, um, um, at a Gordon College, it was still held at Gordon College and I had had lunch with a pastor that I knew. It was not unlike any that I'd done many times before, but later that afternoon, Another pastor of mine, we just happened to be talking during a break, and she said, I was, I was really surprised to see you having lunch with this particular person. And I 
I think I raised my eyebrow and, and uh, queried why would that be? Well, your, your, uh, your, your politics aren't anything alike. I don't see what you have in common with him. And I was, I was really surprised. I was really surprised. But you know, and I've been thinking about this recently, even though this was many years ago, more and more we do live in a world that finds ourselves often sorting uh, ourselves and amongst the people we, uh, that we associate with according to things like politics or according to things like our vision for the future, often even according to economics, um, race, and many others. I thought about that a lot and what it was that, and these are both people that um, I considered not only colleagues but friends. And they each had their own standpoint, which is important, uh, and the time doesn't allow for the whole context. But the important piece for our purposes today is for the person I was having lunch with, my friendship with him was not based on what our politics were. And my friendship with him was not based on where we lived, it was actually, we lived in very different places at that particular point in time. My friendship with him was not based on where I thought the church should go or was going. My friendship with him was not based on age, we're actually fairly different in age. Uh, but this person, like so many, my friendship was based on the faith that we had in common. Now it just so happened, and some of you will relate to this, uh, this particular person had been the spiritual director the year I had my walk to Emmaus. So that's how I got to know him. It was a very deep and significant faith experience. That was my, that was my connection. It wasn't about agreement. It wasn't about uh, believing all the right, quote unquote, right things about how the world should be functioning. It was uh, about faith. It was about our common faith together. Our scriptures I find really interesting this morning. In different ways, they point to this. And sometimes I think it gets lost, uh, lost a lot. In the uh, passage from Joshua, we find this army coming. And the questioner wants to know, whose side is this army going to be on? Whose side is it going to be on? I love the answer. The answer is, really, I'm not on anybody's side. I'm here for God. I'm here for God. Uh, I could be for you. I could be for the other person. But really what I'm here about is for God. This is really the point that Jesus tries to drive home in the gospel lesson today. In the famous uh, occasion where they try, uh, the Pharisees try to trap him by getting him to implicate himself about who pays taxes. Now, just as Bill uh, implied, and um, just as it was then, so today paying taxes is nobody's favorite activity. And indeed, for some, probably among us here, it is even a source of anxiety or frustration. So you can imagine, it's probably not hard to imagine, how if they could get Jesus to speak against Caesar, they could, they could have him right where they wanted. But if he, spoke against, if he spoke against his own faith, they could also have him right where they wanted him. It seemed like he was going to be stuck. But in asking them to produce the coin, I had this answer I love uh, in so many ways. And as he speaks those words, give to Caesar that which is Caesar, and give to God that which is God's, we're reminded that all these generations later, that is wisdom that is still important for us to hear. Yes, our faith will inform our public life. Yes, our faith will inform our friendships. Yes, faith will shape the way we interact with our community but they are not necessarily the same thing. And in fact, sometimes we can use that faith like a weapon. Uh, I've been listening to a piece this week from uh, Brian McLaren, 
Um, he's a, for me, a very thought-provoking author. And he, as a, both as a pastor and in some of the other ministry projects he's been a part of in recent years, has been really focused on how do you connect with people who don't have a church connection. We often think of that as younger people, but increasingly that's people of any age. How do we connect with people that don't, have not made it a life, their life's work to be in a church or have not found a way to be connected with God in some fashion? <clears throat> and one of the points he was talking about was how we so often use uh, the Bible as a weapon. Uh, sometimes to beat up other people uh, that aren't Christian in a way that makes people question, why would I ever want to do that? Be part of that kind of life if I'm feeling beat up. But we often even use it to beat each other up. Like we're trying to prove that we've got the right answers, so often missing the wisdom of another person. So one of the things I was gonna talk with the children about was, was a, a, a teeter-totter. Um, it may have been a while since you've been on one, but you might, have, you might remember a time when you have and how uh, you might go back and forth on the teeter-totter and have fun as you go up and down and up and down. But you might have also had the experience when somebody, maybe just to show, show you who's in control or because they thought they were going to get a laugh out of you, when your partner suddenly jumps off the teeter-totter and you wham down real hard. The balance that you had, of course, has been disrupted uh, in that process. Sometimes in our life, right, we find we're in situations that feel like we're on that kind of teeter-totter. And we want to hold on to something that will give us confidence in our faith as life is seemingly hanging in the balance. I want to suggest with, to you this morning that we can both have confidence in our faith and still be open to the wisdom of one another. That we can be assured of God's presence and activity in our life while at the same time being open to the fact or the possibility even that God might have an interest in people that we don't think we have a lot in common with or maybe even people we're not so sure we want to have any connection with at all. And this is where some of the other pieces that I've talked about over recent weeks really, uh, where I start to put some of those together in my mind because if God, if we are the caretakers of all that God has made, that stewardship piece I talked about um, back at the beginning of July, and if everyone's a child of God, and God wants everyone to have a relationship with him, and will go to great lengths, even to the point of his son on the cross, to have that kind of, basically giving up everything to have that kind of relationship with us, then might it not follow that if everyone can, that if we start to go down a path, whether it's as an individual, or as a congregation, perhaps, or denomination, or as Christians, generally speaking, when we go down the path that says, we've got it, and you don't, or I know that I'm right, and you then have got to be wrong, we are going to find ourselves more likely than not <clears throat> going uh, off in an unhelpful direction. This is not to say that we cannot have strong opinions. It is not to say that we cannot feel passionate about various issues in society or passionate about our ministry. Far from it. Far from it. But in the middle of our passion, in the middle of our advocacy, in the middle of life's experiences that have have helped us to see things uh, often that are, some of you would talk about in justice terms. The fact is that any one of us can see, uh, it's like the uh, passage in Corinthians where it, can, where it says, now I only see in part, and then I will see fully. Well, we're still in that part, place where we only see in part. 
And each one of us here, each Christian has a part. You'll know this, as many of you who've been in Bible study over the years, how one person has a view of a particular passage, and then somebody else adds their part, and someone else adds their part, and so on, in that group. And you get a more complete picture. And you may still not have the whole picture, probably not, but, but boy, that can be so rich and full. Much more, at least I find, much more than if it's just me doing reading on my own, to hear the collected wisdom and the collected life experience of so many people. We live in a time, sadly, and it's not, uh, not unique in American or world history, but it's the time we're in, where so many people have chosen to be in a place that precludes the possibility that someone else may have something that's important for us to hear, or precludes the possibility that someone may have something to say that is important to know. Because even if it is in our experience, so often it's that person's experience. And we let those differences on, on difficult issues so often stand between us and those relationships we could have as hum- one human to another. But also unwittingly, especially when we are representing the church or especially when we are functioning as Christians, either individually or corporately together, we often become a barrier uh, to a relationship with God. I loved how, I don't know if they ever came here uh, when they were doing this, but uh, Dan Weaver and Bob Sweet, uh, two retired pastors in our conference, and um, uh, when I first came into the conference, Dan was serving at Exeter, so not all that far away from here. But they would go like a two-person road show, and their topic was uh, human sexuality, specifically homosexuality and the divisions in the church, and this was a couple decades ago, many of you know this continues to be a very difficult issue in the church. I love the model that they, they presented because they were in very different places and they were very upfront about that. Dan was advocating that the church continue in its traditional approach and belief while Bob wanted to see some significant changes based on uh, new understandings. They were in very different places. They acknowledged that. They even shared how they believed, but then they would enter into dialogue. And they could, and and by doing that, they helped us enter into dialogue and conversation because in that audience, we were in many different places as well. And at the end, they gave each other a hug. You could tell, just even in the conversation, that they loved each other as Christians, that they cared for each other very much, even though they were in those very different places. For some of us here, life feels like uh, we're in this place of push and pull, uh, of perhaps even society becoming a little unbalanced in one fashion or another. And so often in our fear, we retreat we retreat to those parts of our life, those beliefs that we hold the strongest and are firmest about, and just try to wall ourselves off even. Think about this week, what it might mean, um, whether you're in a a more fearful place or hopeful place at at this very moment, think about what it might mean to you to be curious. Curious about someone else's position on something, or curious about somebody's experience in life. I've been. Uh, it's going to take s- some weeks, but um, I've really enjoyed going around. We three or f- three to five different uh, households each week, just getting to know several of you, and uh, you know there are pl- there are points of similarity in li- uh, between my life and some of your lives, and there are points of difference. It's, it's really fun to say, just have somebody talk about their life's experiences, their joys and their struggles, and how life wends its way through twists and turns. 
And sometimes I find uh, I'm in a very different place. Uh, and again, Brian McLaren says, sometimes when we find ourselves in different places, rather than clo being closed off, you might consider asking out of a, curio uh, a genuine curiosity, wow, I see that differently. Not as a point of argument, but as a point of uh, information. He talks about uh, scripture as not a, what uh, the term he uses is constitution, like a legal document, but more as a conversation. A conversation grounded in the experiences of the people at the time that we have these events recorded. But also a, a conversation that helps inform our own conversation and our own time as well. When life teeter-totters, how do you find balance? Do you uh, jump off the teeter-totter and slam yourself down into one particular place? Do you hang in there looking for how God is maybe speaking to you today? Do you, when faced with the possibility of having a friendship with somebody who might be in a very different place, have a very different life experience than you, do you leave that possibility open? Or do you just out of hand say, I know I wouldn't have anything to do with that person, or I'm not, I know I'm not anything like that person? Even when God sees the possibility of significant connection. I've been very fortunate over the years to have, uh, to have many different friendships with people who, um, on particular issues, or on the ways they, they have chosen, uh, the, the, uh, the choices they've made in their lives, or any number of things, we might be in very different places, but who, among whom I account as really good friends because uh, for so many of those, what's at the heart of, uh, the heart of the friendship is, is our faith. And it's a faith that, be, at least as I've experienced it, because it could embrace even me, I see God embracing us as friends together in a world that is so, uh, has so much momentum to pull us apart, might we as Christians be a key ingredient in helping hold the world together in some kind of balance? Never getting too far to the right or the left on maybe politics, or too far off to the ends of the spectrum that we can't still reach hands across in Christian friendship just the way God reaches us through grace, the very love of Christ himself. Would you pray with me? Holy God, come to us, we pray. Melt us, mold us, Use us for your purposes. As the scripture said today, remind us to look to you in all that we do, all that we decide, all that we are. And where we fall short, help us to continue to grow that we might evermore be your disciples, bringing hope and grace and peace into this world. For it is in your name we pray. Amen. And we have a musical response in It Is In Your Faith We Sing. 2226. Two, Bind us together. together.
As we come to our time of prayer, I would invite you to uh, offer joys or concerns that you would like to share with the congregation this morning. Uh, I was just asked this morning by Janine uh, Royer uh, to ask for her, for prayers for her. She's had some tests and she should have the results on Monday, but she's not up to par, so uh, thank you. Prayers for Janine as she awaits the results of those tests. My niece, Kristen, is listed in the bulletin. She's having her second surgery for breast cancer. They found breast cancer in the margins again. That's going to be on Friday of this week. So prayers for Kristen Blendis. as she is uh, preparing for her second surgery. Second surgery on breast cancer, right. yes. And uh, Tim, I would lift up uh, prayers for many of you might remember Diane Johnson. Uh, she is now, uh, she is home, continues in uh, uh, cancer treatment, and uh, it's not a good situation for Diane. So keep Diane in your prayers. Any others? I have a joy. Uh, this week, um, my grandson, my son and my grandson were here and they went out sailing on a very gusty day. They're both very good sailors, but the, the wind was so gusty. It took the mast over. Um, one of them came in. They could only do one person on a boat at the time. So one came in and the other one was out on the boat and the mast went over and um, <clears throat> So my, other, my son said he's in trouble, so he went out there to help him. And look, they both had life preservers on, so they were okay. But um, anyway, short, they, they lost the mast in about 25 feet of water. So they came in, and the next morning they went out uh, with flippers to see if they could locate it. My grandson had done points of gradient, or whatever you call this, to locate exactly where this had gone down. And I'm sorry this is such a long story, but it's so good. <laughs> I just have to praise God for it. Mm. Because the next morning, I heard this strange whistle outside our dock. There was a guy in a pontoon boat, and he called my son and said, can I help you? I saw you were searching for something yesterday. Now he was in full gear and scuba gear. <laughs> and Lee said, my son said, wow, that was fast. <laughs> I said, God answers prayers sometimes very fast. And so they uh, went down. They were able to get all the pieces, brought them back up. Everything was okay. And they were much relieved. But I praise and thank God. Mm. Appreciation for the, the kind and generosity of a, stra a stranger who lent his talents, yeah. Let us then come to our time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, again, we thank you for this day, and we thank you that you are a part of it. And we thank you for the many people who are a part of, of our lives, who, who bring joy, who bring meaning, who bring hope, and, and many whom we love even when there are difficulties with those relationships. We thank you for people who teach us, who repair our homes and cars, who help make this world function indeed for joys of complete strangers lending a hand in a time of need and we confess that at the same time 
Not everything is perfect. We have people that we would like to know better, but something is standing in the way. We have people in our lives who, for whom the relationship is strained or even broken. We have people that we've lost touch with, uh, people who've come and gone, and relationships in all, all manner of shape and form. For those times that we have caused a break or our inability to see have strained the way we relate to another, forgive us, we pray. And help us see as we go forward and with the eyes of grace that in whatever our experience and whatever we are so certain about that we don't lose room in our hearts for someone with a different experience or another perspective or a completely different way of seeing and encountering the world. Help us see the eyes of Jesus in each person we speak with, reminding ourselves that you made each one just as you made us. We lift up to you our prayers this morning for those joys of people who have touched our lives. We also remember those that are awaiting test results like Janine or surgery like Kristen or whatever it is today that is weighing in their minds or indeed their very bodies. Help us to be channels of your grace, to recognize how you are already holding us in the palms of your hands and walking with us through the thickets of life. Help us to see you as you are, generously giving yourself day by day that we might be filled with grace and also be grace for others. And we know that's not an always, always an easy road to walk. Sometimes we're tempted to, f to stand up and fight, sometimes literally, other times with words. Sometimes we are tempted to get even or seek revenge. Sometimes we just want to wash our hands of whatever it is is before us, like something never happened. But you, hung, you hang in there with us, even when we do something like that to you. Just as you hung in with your disciples, when they often mistook your teaching for traditional ideas of power, but still you taught them, as you, when you taught them to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Myself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall live. As God has so graciously given to us, we give back now in the receiving of our morning tithes and offerings.
gifts, O God, in the hope that they may spread your word with power and grace. May our offerings speak with an active voice and with tones of love. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the creating and living word among us. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn 664, Sent Forth by God's Blessing. Give honor to Christ 
and that name which we bear. Let us go to be people of grace, curious about each person we meet, that we might be not only fellow walkers of the faith together, but in sharing ministry, hope in the world. So we go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Grant us peace through all our trials. May he shelter us from harm, keep us safe and warm as we go along. May the love of Jesus go with you as we part and go our separate ways. May we be more like him with a love that times with him. Father, hear our prayer. Amen.